And we are back to discuss uh, the second and third episodes of Loki, uh, the new series on Disney+, Plus, focusing on the titular character of Loki from the Thor films. Uh, Preston, what's up, man? It's been a minute since we've actually sat down and recorded. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Have you been enjoying um, your vacation? Uh, a vacation? <laughs> it's <laughs> summertime. Had, what do you mean? I, I haven't taken a vacation since uh, the beginning, since before COVID. So, oh, geez. no, no, no. Yeah. I mean, what's the point? You can't go anywhere. I mean, it's just getting to the point where you can go someplace. And so, I don't know. No, I mean, this week, this weekend I actually went to the beach, but it was just, uh, it was a long drive. So, I don't know. By the way, for those of you who don't know, Preston's birthday was a while ago. So, obviously, happy late birthday to Preston. For those of you wondering, he finally turned 30. Um... Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> 30. 30 again. 30 again um, and 30 again next year. So prepare. You know, you know what the thing about turning 30 is I'm not sure if like I'm still allowed to like high school musical. Like, you know, <laughs> I don't know. What 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 else do people like that are 30? Like, what are they into? Uh, I'll let you know when I turn 30 this year. <laughs> okay. Emo, right? That's a thing, right? You guys no, are into emo. Not at not a 30, not anymore. That's, uh, that's at like 15, No, no, but maybe. I'm saying like, but that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm not saying people are watching High School. I mean, High School Musical came out in like, what, 2006 or something? But like, so. people that would be 30, like that would be like when, like they would have been like 15, right? So it would have been more, um, you know, their, their their cup of tea. Same with emo, right? They would have been fifteen. Emo would have been out. Whatever. You saying yeah. that word emo? I don't know. It feels weird to me. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's because you're oh. a father now. It just feels weird when you say emo. Well, emo emo was was a very different uh, thing when I was in high school, but it kind of transitioned into 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 pop emo. But emo was like a form of a, a, a very uh, it was it was a screamy form of hardcore. When I was in high school, it was, it was, it was a thing, but it was, it just meant something different. People yeah. are still edgy even to this day, but anyways, oh, yeah, sorry yeah. to the audience. Uh, we get off on these tangents every now and then, but yeah, uh, yeah, Loki, we're going to cover episodes two and three. And, um, I have to say these episodes are slower, but I came to this realization that it's kind of to be expected, uh, dealing with, uh, Loki in this regard when, when comparing it to WandaVision and Falcon and Soldier, a friend of mine was telling me how he's not liking Loki as much because it's a little slower pace, which, like I said, it should be expected. Wanda, Wanda, Maximoff, and Vision, and, you know, their, their, their yeah. whole crew, that, they have powers that can, like, destroy things. And even Falcon and Soldier, once again, powers destroy things. Loki has never, he's in the middle of destruction every now and then, but his powers are more suited for, you know, uh, subtle, uh, trickery and guile that's the thing it's 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 a more cerebral show and yeah. so there is more talking and it, you know it's a higher concept i like it i like um, it too in in the in the la in the end of the third episode there's a big action sequence which i thought was pretty bad it was a pretty <laughs> horrible action sequence <laughs> but um i don't know i don't mind when there's no action i like all of the the witty dialogue and and interesting uh thought experiments that are going on and and the mysteries like i still still don't know what's going on which is fantastic you know so in the second episode once again it was a much slower episode but we do find out a couple of things first and foremost the loki variant uh, it's a she and we yeah. don't really know um if if she's a variant of loki or if she's just her own thing because people have been telling me that in the comics her name is sylvie Sylvie's not really a Loki variant, but she was taught her magic by Loki. Right. There's there in the comic, things are very different, but I'm not sure if that's a misdirect. There's a lot of misdirects right now. Plus, like everybody's a liar. She's a Loki. Everybody's a liar. Everybody's lying. We, we, we have no idea what people are. But yeah, in the comic, she, she was more of a, a servant of, of Loki. Mm -hmm. But but then again, you know, the costumes make her look more like a version of Lady Loki with, I think, the broken the broken horn. Right. Um, and the the Time Variant Authority sh thinks she's a Loki version. And she never says she's not a Loki version. She just says, don't call me that. So I don't know. I mean, maybe we're going to find out that she's not a Loki. Because um, it is kind of weird that there's a flirty, that they're flirting, considering... It's himself, right? 
it's kind of kind of weird to have, you know if, if he has sex with himself Lo- loki's very egotistical it reminds me of how like uh jamie and cersei in a sense and yes i'm inputting ice and fire in this um it reminds me of like jamie and cersei in a sense like cersei's character is so in love with herself that fucking jamie is kind of like fucking a male version of herself so well that's that's completely george r, r. martin's intention when, he, when right. he wrote that character i mean that that she's in love with herself so she wants to fuck herself i mean jamie and cersei look identical um and so it also jamie is a jamie is based on off a character named annalyn from in the house of the worm and in that story he also tries to sleep with a woman who looks exactly like him and he fully admits like <laughs> oh, the only reason i like you is because you look like me the well well the, the female variant she doesn't uh, sylvie she doesn't look like tom hiddleston which is fine no, but no. if they're supposed to be the same and I, I wouldn't blame loki for you know because he's into himself there there's actually by the way did you ever see red dwarf why does that sound um, familiar? Red, Red Dwarf is an old, long-running uh, British sci-fi comedy show. Um, oh, yeah, I think you told so, me about this before. Uh, yeah, well, in one it, in one episode, they go to a parallel universe where all the men are women and all the women are men. And okay. the the, our, the protagonist ends up getting drunk and having sex with himself or the female version of himself. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty weird. And then he gets he ends up getting pregnant because they're in their universe and in their universe the the men get pregnant which is why like everything got flipped. Um yeah, I don't know. It was kind of it's kind of funny though. It's just how how incredibly creepy and weird it would be to have sex with yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but in episode 2, uh some of the most important things we find out is that um that the variant hides during apocalyptic events in history. Because whatever they do in that time frame that the world is ending doesn't matter, so it can hide. So yeah. that's that's I like that. They confirm it by going to Pompeii. Um and the other thing is that um which is really dark. Like I will say that Loki is the whole series is the darkest thing that's ever been done by Disney, right? Really? Don't you think? I mean, the only other competition would be would be Mandalorian, but when during that the storm the stormtrooper slaughters that I complained so much about, you don't get to see their faces, right. and so the death isn't there. But now in Loki, you're seeing these people that are dying. You're seeing their faces as her her stick tears them apart and 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 annihilates them. It's um, I feel like there are it's, it's, darker things in Disney. I just can't pump, I just can't remember them right now. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure. I mean, Disney Disney has changed. They've come a long way. I know? don't. I don't think so at all. I think they've gotten worse in certain places, but Marvel still seems to shine through that. No, I'm talking about what they're willing to market. Oh. So, um, bringing it back to High School Musical, because you know everything, <laughs> everything really relates to High School Musical in the end. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But when High School Musical came out, which again, I, well, I'm guessing that it came out in like 2006. Um, one of the one of the main characters, cause cause you know you were really into it, cause you were like 15 back then. Uh, <laughs> well, wait a minute. <laughs> like so, the, the the villains are are these uh, twins, you know, like a um, I mean they're not quite like Cersei and, and Jamie, but they're they're these twins, and the 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 brother is clearly coded as gay. And um, later on, the director, I think, admitted that the character was gay. This is the character of Ryan, the the, the villain of high school, one of the villains of High School Musical. Um, and so he's coded as gay, but they never mention it in any of the three High School Musicals that he's gay. It's just alluded to. Right. It's just alluded to. What's funny, they, they couldn't get away with it. But now, you know, in this episode of Loki, like Loki and Loki and Loki and Sylvie fully admit that both of them are 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 uh, they're transsexuals and bisexuals. I mean, it's just they they have fluid gender and and fluid sex and fluid gender. I, I want to get into that in a minute because yeah, people are fucking stupid. But in episode two, we find out that actions <laughs> near apocalyptic events don't matter. The variant is a female Loki, maybe. And that Mobius yeah. likes jet skis for some reason. Yeah, I mean, I think he likes jet skis because we eventually find out that he's a variant. And that was so a huge prob- theory. Yeah. So it's probably from his past life, mm-hmm. right? So that's episode... Uh, also, real quick, um, fucking hell, man. The future in 2050 America, uh, 
first off, it's Alabama. It's already. It looks like 2021, doesn't it? I mean, (laughs) you're like the future in Alabama looks exactly like now. Oh my God. They're all in a Costco or a, or a fucking Amazon store. Well, to be fair, fair, uh, Alabama is always backwards and always backwards in time. So of of course it would be 2021 in Alabama, but I'm sure in 2050 and like the real places like New York city, you know, Chicago, it's more futuristic. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, it was kind of intense. Though a brother, uh, my brother-in-law is from Montana, and he said in Montana we got everything late. Like you know how you had garbage pail kids, like we got garbage pail kids like eight years after you guys got garbage pail kids. <laughs> I'm like, what? And he's like, yeah. Like they take all of their like it stops selling someplace, and so they ship it to a new location, and so you end up getting like all the music, all the style and clothing. So Montana like, gets all the hand-me-downs. Yeah, like when I was in high school, wallet chains were like the thing to wear. And like wallet chains didn't hit like Montana until like for another four or five years. Like this kind of thing, you know. By the way, this isn't a dig at you at you right wingers. This is a dig at Alabama because everyone can agree Alabama is fucking backwards. Regardless, at 2050 America has what, what was that five, six hurricanes at the same time? fucking uh, the weather holy well, shit i mean you know the climate change and everything they're right they're right there on the go- on the coast on the gulf coast there's been climate change you know god so, damn i'm not looking i think to that's that. the, i think that's the statement being made yeah, yeah of course um and the episode ends with uh the, the reveal uh by the way two things the first thing is people some people were, were a little complaining that loki is getting his ass kicked by jim bob in alabama um when he's a god mm. So how the yeah. fuck is that possible? I have a I have a retort for that. Um, okay, okay, because because I was wondering the same thing in episode three, but at least with that you could be like, well, those are aliens. We have no idea like how strong they are on that planet. But I was surprised that they're able to pick them up and throw them out of a train. Like, aren't you a god? <laughs> like Hulk, like Hulk literally took your body and like smashed it back and forth. Like he's at least really really durable. Right. I think uh, the word god is used a little um, too loosely here um, no he's not a literal god he's right not he's not a literal yeah. god but like I, I would argue uh thor and loki they're i don't want to, i don't want to say demigod but like they have powers and they're incredibly durable and incredibly strong and well they're from a different race of right. beings you know i'm just accepting that they're from a different race of beings from a parallel from an alternate reality you know that have elevated uh like life expectancy durability strength Mm -hmm. um and and that sort of thing um you know i i accept all of that and when they visited the idea is that when they visited earth people got confused and thought they were gods because they had these abilities exactly i think like i said i when i think of god i think of the all-purpose man that's omniscient omnipotent and you know yeah yeah so so i mean this this was a, a fairly common um sci-fi trope in the in the in the 60s um you see it in comic books you see it like the whole plot of the eternals is this you see it in star trek there's a star trek episode where they find apollo in space it's um but this this is this idea that oh these ancient gods were actually like alien beings you know okay but accepting that that loki is a stronger alien being like why is he getting his ass kicked um, in Alabama on this, on this alien world. Um, what, so you, you have, you have a retort. Uh, I guess you could argue that when Sylvie enchants Jim Bob in Alabama, I guess she's maybe giving him extra strength or it's just that when Loki, Mm. not really a God, Loki may not be stronger than humans on earth, but he's definitely more durable. Yeah. I'm trying to remember. So in the original Thor movie, Thor loses the power of Thor. So like take the hammer out of it. And he's, is, is, is he just a regular dude at that point? I think so. I, 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 I'm sure he still has the durability. That's just physiology of Asgardians. So I'm sure he yeah. has the durability and, you know, like the great immune system or whatever. But right. I think Loki, the reason the character, for me at least, is so interesting is because he's not as strong as Thor. So he has to rely on the trickery magic that he uses. The, um, there was one scene at the end of the third episode where a big pillar falls and he like uses his magic to stop the pillar and relift it. And I was like, well, if he has that power, how did he get his ass kicked on that train? 
And then I started second guessing myself and I was like, well, wait a minute, maybe Sylvie has him in a big hallucination and this whole thing is a hallucination, you know, or maybe Loki planned the whole thing and he wanted to get kicked off the train. Like, I don't know. I don't like these are tricksters, right? Who are supposed to be planning people. So you're supposed to question everything. Yeah. Right. Like she, she spent a little bit of the episode explaining to him how to do, um, uh, taking over people's mind and how she creates the illusion inside their head, which we began the episode of that. So how am I supposed to even know if, cause she was right up there on his head. Like, how am I even supposed to know that episode three happened? Like, couldn't they still be in that shed? That's entirely possible. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, other thing that I, yeah. that I also wanted to throw in there that was ridiculous is that, um, are people not familiar with like, Norse mythology isn't Loki doesn't Loki have the ability to transform into a woman and in Norse mythology yes. didn't Loki give birth to an eight-legged horse uh I have to look up that eight-legged horse horse but I, I do know I, I yeah well I think um I know snake acid burns out his eyes over and over again and his and his wife like holds a bowl over his ocular cavity to stop the to stop the venom here it is uh Slepnir, probably saying that wrong, sorry to the Scandinavians yeah. in the comment section, was the eight-legged horse born of Loki and belonged to Odin. Loki gave birth to Slepnir after turning himself into a female horse when his father demanded he sabotage the work of a craftsman. Okay, so there you go. Like, it's in mythology, yeah. but people are still complaining about it anyways? I, I mean, they're gonna... Haters gonna hate. They're gonna complain. I mean, come on. Like, even though it's in the original mythology that Loki takes the form of a woman. And even though it's in the comic book that Loki takes the form of a woman and has ended up as a woman, they can't, they can't accept it in, in, in the show. Like come I on. had some, come I on. had some dipshit in my comment section on the first, uh, we did, we reviewed the first episodes on my channel. I had some dipshit in the comment section going, the show is woke. How so? Because I'm the first motherfucker to call out the woke bullshit, but it, this, it wasn't woke. How was it woke? And the guy goes, in that one scene, Owen Wilson's looking up at the the female judge, and like he's he's bowing down to her. And like, like oh. you, you guys got to stop watching these like neck bearded YouTubers who like clearly have a vendetta right. against women. As as is, as if there aren't female black judges. Like I don't, I, I, you know, like. <laughs> Come like hey, let, let me t let me tell you you know old man press old man uh, preston story um uh -oh. when i was when i was in college i got a ticket for drunk and disorderly and i had to go to uh i was not drunk or disorderly but the cops uh you know the chicago pd wanted to uh harass harass a, a young cocky um uh preston jacobs and so i got this ticket for like 65 dollars uh, for drunken disorderly and I was just livid. I was livid that the system how how dare the system Try to try to give me a $65 ticket. And so I went to court. I got I you know, I was like 20 at the time I like got in a suit. I, I was just like I'm gonna I'm gonna do it I'm gonna fight this and I remember I remember arriving to court that day and I waited hours and hours and hours for my turn and I remember the uh, my my uh, my judge that day you know, female black woman, and she let me off. Yeah, <laughs> but, <laughs> but the point is, female black judges certainly exist. Um, you don't need to, uh, you don't need to, uh, you know, complain about it. Well, and the prosecutor, the prosecutor was a white guy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. No, like, the point I'm trying to make is, guys, stop watching these like neck bearded YouTubers who clearly have a vendetta against women because they didn't get laid in high school. Like, stop watching those oh, guys. God. Like the whole Loki thing, he transforms into a woman. Like, come on. Like, of course he's gonna be black. That that would just make sense to me at least. Like, that's true. Come on. Um, I mean, just all. Yeah. The so the other the other thing that's kind of weird is about um the Loki the Loki Sylvie thing. I mean, yeah, she has blonde hair. She also has a completely different accent. Um, I noticed but, that. Well, it's tough. So, so Tom Tom Hiddleston has got a um, well, he he has a lot of because he's been working with Americans for so long. His accent has been blending away from British to American a little bit. <laughs> but he has a, he has a a proper posh, very posh uh, British accent. I mean, he went to Eton and Cambridge. 
you know, and like grew up in, you know, a wealthy Londonite. I mean, he like Eton is this boarding school that that that's like the most prestigious thing in, in the country. Like if you went to Eton, you're you're in a different class of of people, hmm. you know, um, the uh, and, you know, Cambridge is obviously their best, you know college in, in the uk though i'm sure some people will be like oh, oxford's really good but yeah, cambridge <laughs> <laughs> but um but yeah no he's 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 the posh he has the poshest of the posh like british accent like that's the whole thing um and she, her her accent is probably like L- liverpool or something that would be my guess um uh not not she's his from uh, Nottingham, North Nottingham, uh... Nottinghamshire. I think that's oh, what a... here. I look like an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's going to be like, how, how could you ever possibly as an American confuse those, uh, accents? And I'm like, oh, the funny sorry. thing is for someone from the South of, of, of England and someone from the North of England, I can easily tell those accents apart. They're very, very distinct. Oh, well, wow. and I'm sure to a British person, each of those accents is is very distinct. Um, but for for me, I was just like, well, she's, I can ki- I can tell the difference between a southern a southern British person and a northern British person, and and so like to a British person, they're gonna be like, oh, like Nottingham and 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 Liverpool have completely different accents. But to my ear, it's like, well, they're they're both they're both northern. I mean, come on, like, all right. They're, they're You're pissing off a London. lot of people. Thank God this is going on your channel. <laughs> <laughs> but but this this happened before when we were talking about like Game of Thrones and how um, uh, oh that's not Gendry, right? But Gend- Gendry and Davos are supposed to be from the same area of King's Landing, but Davos is, is Irish and has an Irish accent, and um, uh, 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 Gendry has has an English accent. You know, it's completely completely different. I don't know. She's a variant of him, so she's gonna have a variation of his accent. Like she comes from a parallel universe where where Asgard has has like Nottingham accents. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> like that's, that's why they destroyed it. Like the Time Variant Authority is like, fuck, they have Nottingham accents. Destroy them all. <laughs> How dare they? The Time Variant uh, Authority Authority is a bunch of like posh London wankers. How dare they? But um, no, episode two was, you know, nice change of pace from episode one. Once again, I, I, I knew what this kind of show would be. It's not going to be the fast-paced action that um, uh, Falcon and Soldier was. And it wasn't going to be like the mysterious, you know, occasionally action, occasionally just sitting around talking that WandaVision was. This is just more of a slow-paced show with occasional sprinkling of action thrown in there. That's fine. Episode two was okay. Not as good as episode one. Um, I, w- I would also say I liked episode three a bit better than two, but in episode three called Lamentus, um, Loki mm. follows the variant, whose name is Sylvie, back to the TVA, and she wants to get to the timekeepers. So ba- ba- based on the uh, the timing of the door, I really thought in the last epi- in episode two that she wanted him to follow her and because, you know, it like the door waits for him and then yeah. closes immediately after he goes through. Turns out, no, that was just, uh, she didn't want him to follow. She didn't care. You know, she, she, she was on her own thing and it just happened that the door did that. Oh, well. So she got the information <laughs> from the, um, one of the hunters and basically mm. she gets inside the hunter's mind and is like pretending to be the hunter's friend, just trying to get information, which I thought was a little cool. Um, we get, yeah. a, we get a, a glimpse inside the whole enchantment thing. Um, but, uh, while they're both in the TVA, by the way, the fight scene between her and the, the hunter guys, eh. I, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> I hate in any fight scene when people make their opponents like hit each other and kill each other or crash into each other. I just think it, like she, and she did that, like. Oh, you miss me, and you accidentally like vaporize your friend. I always hate that trope. And, and like, I mean, maybe maybe it could happen in a real fight. I don't know, but it just seems silly to me. But it was it was fun. It was better than the the action scene at the end. But yeah, I, I mean, it's, I I will always remember like Jackie Chan, um, like this documentary Jackie Chan did about telling the difference between American fight scenes and you know mm. Chinese movie star action scenes. 
where Chinese movie stars, you know, most of them, not most of them, but there, there's there's an element yeah. of like, you know, they know what they're doing versus American actors and actresses don't really care about fighting. They either let the stunt double do it or there's a lot of cuts, jumps and yeah. cuts. And I hate the jumps and cuts. I always, right. always hate that. Like what, you know, he, he throws his fist and then they cut and then the guy's flying away. But I mean, the fact that Liam Neeson can be an action star just speaks to that. Like, you're, we're going to put him in the Taken movies and he's going to like beat up a bunch of people. Liam, Liam fucking Neeson. Like, R Liam Neeson. They made him into an action star. They made John Krasinski. They've made into an action star. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, it's just, it, it's <laughs> silly. It, it's silly. They, they, um, you're right that, that Hong Kong fighting needs to be back. I don't know. Maybe there's, it's probably legally you can't do it or something. Cause, cause like the act, people taking actual hits and people actually getting hit with stuff. Um, people getting hurt. Uh, it, it's, it's, I don't know. It's just such a, uh, it's such a different watch. Cause you're just like, oh my gosh, this is a real fight. Unlike whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, so there, she's trying to get to the golden elevator to get up to the timekeepers that are interrupted by the, the judge uh, whose name is Renslayer. I didn't really know that. I'm sure I heard it, but I, I just forgot. Um, and she goes, uh, if you come closer, I'll kill him, referring to Loki. And yeah. I'm like, why, why does she care? Uh, but they escape. Yeah, of course. That's immediately. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> so they escape using the Tempad to Lamentus 1. Uh, during their apocalyptic event in 2077, where a moon that is, is, is going to be crushed by a planet falling on it. I, uh... I, I was confused by that mix up as that, 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 like, how is a planet falling into a moon? Like, that doesn't make any sense. So maybe the moon right? is Shouldn't falling it... into the planet? That's what I thought. My... So, so I watched the episode twice, and that's what I thought. But then the other, but then when they explained it again, no, like, they were very consistent. They were on the moon. And the planet was falling into them. And I was like, how is, how, how did that, <laughs> why is this all backwards? I'm... It's space, space, space stuff. How, I'd... how does a planet fall into a moon? I do not know. Uh, not so they're, they're unable to escape this apocalyptic event because the time pad has run out of power. So they sneak aboard the train, uh, bound for the Ark, intended to leave and evacuate Lamentus 1. But during the whole thing, they get into a fight. Now, before all that, they do sit down and have a conversation. I actually kind of like this little little discussion thing. But the entire time, I'm thinking, they're both Lokis. There's some lying going on here. There's some bullshit going on here. Like, I can't... I don't know if... Like, Tom Hiddleston is so good at what he does. Like, I don't know if, yeah. if, if their conversation is genuine or they're both just trying to feel each other out. Yeah, I mean... The stuff about his, I mean, uh, as George R. R. Martin would say, the uh, the best lies are the ones that are, you know, filled with truth. Or he says, a hey, um, in uh, Dying of the Light, he says, the, the, the only thing worse than a lie is an utter lie, because an utter lie has some truth in it, which makes it even more deceptive and horrible. <laughs> you know, like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's what he does. Like, you know, all of that stuff about his mother and his emotional feelings about his mother are true. But is he using it just to get into Sylvie's head and try to make a connection with her? Because it did work. I mean, he, he started getting her trust and she told him about how to how to do her magic a little bit. The funny thing is, um, I was actually when, when, when he was going into his we, we know all about Loki. We, you know, we've seen the Thor movies. I actually wanted to know about if she is a Loki variant. I wanted to know about her whole situation. If she is female Loki, is there a female Thor? And a female Odin, like like, is it like that where she's from? Like it's well in the in the comic book this in the comic book it got switched because <clears throat> um, Loki and the Asgardians died, and when when their spirits went in and inhabited other beings, and so Thor didn't die, and so it it it, it maybe that would have happened to Thor had he died as well, but. Um, and then I don't know. I don't think in, in I, I don't know of any stories in, in the in the mythology of Thor changing changing sex, changing gender. So I don't know. I eh. but their little conversation, I enjoyed it. I liked it. But eventually they get kicked out of the arc after a fight scene, and uh, they have to make their way back to their their <clears throat> I guess their whole idea is they have to go to the nearest city, try to get to the arc and get on board to try to survive the planet coming down on them. 
because when Loki got kicked out of the train, he accidentally landed on the, the, the temp pad, which the whole time I'm like, there's no way he, he's that stupid. He had to have done something to trick her. That's what I keep thinking. There's so many things about their trip that don't really make sense. Um, the, the sleeping situation when they both refuse to sleep, but somehow she falls asleep. Him singing that weird song, the Asgardian song, and her having this weird look on her face. It's like, does she not know the Asgardian song? Is that what they were trying to communicate? Him being weak enough to get kicked out of the train. Him breaking the temp pad. What I'm thinking is he has the, an entire handle in the situation, and he's just stringing her along just to fuck with her. Maybe. maybe or maybe the reverse. You know, that's that, also that this true. Is all, this is all an illusion. They were somehow able to walk all the way to the city <laughs> and, and they only had like, t you know, 12 hours uh, before before the destruction. Um, and then they get there just in the nick of time and fail, you know, just in the nick of time um, to fail that that scene where they get to the city and like there's just chaos all over. I just liked it. I thought it was awesome. I thought it was. I, well, I th the first time I thought it was OK. And then the second time through. They just kind of do a bunch of pan arounds of them, and then they get attacked by train security guards out of nowhere. Like, how do these train security guards know to attack them, and why, when, like, everything is going to shit? Why would they bother wasting their time? I think the security guards on that planet all look like that. I guess, but why waste their time attacking the two of them? And, and you know... And, they try to make this big deal out of it being one shot, but there were so many cuts I in that, that shot. I noticed that. Like, so I, I hate, like, level. if you're going to do one shot, do fucking one shot. Yeah. Don't, don't, like, you know, people talk about, like, the, uh, the beginning of, um, uh, is it Revenge of the Sith is one shot, but it's like, it doesn't matter. It's all computer generated. So there's no, there's no difficulty to it. You know, this isn't, this isn't, um, uh, that incredible Tony Ja uh, uh, Thai movie where where with the um, with the one shot that's like oh my god it's so good. You know what I'm thinking of I'm just... that has a really good shot is uh, Oing Bak Oing Bak Oing Bak. But have you ever seen season three of Daredevil on Netflix? Yeah, that that's goes really on good. for so long. It's all one shot. There, there's a there's a couple they they do it a couple times in the Daredevil series. I know that um, uh, True Detective has has a really great. Um, long scene so does uh, um, Atonement and I think there's a, a, a Russian movie that the whole movie's in one shot but like Oing Box like if you could, if you ever like just go onto YouTube sometime and look up Oing I think, Box I think I've seen it before Is it, it's the uh, Thai man who's trying to rescue the elephant yeah yeah I've yeah. seen it before oh my god it's just like absolutely incredible absolutely incredible what a, what a, what a fucking what a fucking movie that is well I mean except for the whole like transphobia ridiculousness of it but but like what an incredible movie now preston is. let's not get woke here you know uh, <laughs> i mean you, you you remember what i talked about uh about um uh commando yes oh, it's it's yeah it's kind of like that <laughs> <laughs> but uh no so the episode ends on an insane note where the arc is just a fucking piece of the piece of the planet that's coming off just hits the arc and that destroys their chances. I was expect yeah. I'm expecting the entire time in the next episode either the TVA will come in and rescue them just in time right. or yeah, it's all Loki's like little trap. It was never broken in the first place. He just needed to like you know, right, and it never had it never had a low battery in the first place. Yeah. yeah, so it's either like Loki's trap. It never had a low battery in the first place, or it's Silva's illusion. And they're all still in Loki's mind, or the TVA is going to come in at the last section, sec, uh, last second, and get him. Well, now her magic if I were work being... on him, but she doesn't know. I think I think they established that she doesn't know how to do his like little illusion things. Yeah. Um, if I were going to do it, like, and and I wanted them to get off their that planet. All they need to do is do something that changes the timeline. But the problem is, is that if they're in an apocalypse, how do you change the timeline in an apocalypse? They they have to do something. And then that would create variants to call have the TVA show up. Right? Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. You know, but, um, but the TVA is a little busy right now. But you, how do but how do you create variants? You, know, you just have to rescue one person, right? You just have to get one person off the planet. But I don't know. Huh. 
Yeah, yeah, that's that's interesting. How do you do that? I don't know. But at that point, I mean, the arc is destroyed. It's pretty. It's pretty tough at this point. I mean, the the planet's crashing into the moon. (laughs) I would say if if Loki bothered to steal some of the time stones and somehow hide it on his person without yeah getting maybe detected. maybe that could be it he could reverse time with a time stone that he found in the drawer well i they, in episode two they set him up with his like own little getup so i'm assuming they would have to search they would have searched him enough to have like caught it when they were dressing him up i would assume yeah yeah um yeah that's true but and also does he even know how to use the time stone he seems like to be he, only focused on using the uh the tesseract and the uh Right, but the, and that was already in Tesseract form. Yeah. So, like, would he would he even know how to use the stone, like the stone outside of the Tesseract? I don't know. I have no idea. But uh, no, I liked episode three. I thought it was uh, pretty good, a little bit better than episode two. Um, I love the reveal that the time uh, variant authority, most of them are just variants themselves, brainwashed by. Whoever. Yeah. So, so I, I assume now, like when Mobius went in and was like, "Who's your other?" who's these other people you're talking to it's actually just other versions of mobius like other mobius variants i'm assuming like well like when he when he commented on on the rings on the table like he created like a different variant of him created the rings on the table or when he had that like pencil with the um with the or he was oh now i'm thinking like why he's remembering that pencil from from that high school that was his high school probably he probably got it from a different variant uh and he like and it, like his memory's been wiped, but he it, like he remembers it probably a little bit. Deep so I'm imagining, yeah. So I'm imagining that he's either had his memory wiped several several times, or there she, there's several Mobiuses working uh, for them. I know in the comic book Mobius is a clone, and there's many Mobius clones. Yeah, in the co- in the comic book they are produced by the Time Variant Authority. They are clones, but like here, so they're they're varying a little bit, but. You know, there more than there's more than one Mobius in the in the comic book. So yeah, hmm. I'm imagining there's just another variant of him. Well, we are at the halfway point, so there's only three episodes left. You know, um, yeah. Like, like I said, episode one was great. I loved it. Episode two was good. Episode three, a little bit better than episode uh, two, in my opinion. Um, there has to be a point where now that Loki knows this information, there has to be a point where Loki will probably go to Mobius and try to explain to him what he really is. Because that reveal, a lot of people were happy with that reveal because that was the major theory. Yeah, yeah. The Mobius Mobius is clearly a <clears throat> jet ski and dude. I wonder who, if that's went, how the, the show is going to end. Because a buddy of mine was telling me, like, what if it ends with, like, Mobius on a jet ski going... Wow. Because that's Owen Wilson's thing? Yeah. Wow. This is really great. Oh. Whoa. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I mean, I think he went to that high school. He used to jet ski. He was he was a variant and, and then he got taken away. <clears throat> but I wonder how like what he did to to cause himself to split to splinter off. Well, either what we're saying is, you know, either one of what we've said is correct or the one possibility you haven't realized yet is also probably true. Uh, Mephisto's behind everything. That's that's also completely possible. Yeah, that's the other <laughs> thing. There's, so there's these thematic elements of you know, like Loki, Loki and Sylvie are clearly are clearly supposed to be devils or demons, like jumping from hell to hell to hell and unable to escape hell. Oh, I didn't realize that. Fuck. So we're probably not going to get Mephisto. They are Mephisto, I guess. They I are. Know. No, yeah. They they already are the like they the the woman in the in the trailer who zaps them with the gun like calls them demons. Like in the stained glass, he's a demon. Yeah. Um <clears throat> they they're clearly the demons trying to escape hell. Cuz each of they keep going to each apocalypse. They keep going to hell after hell after hell trying to escape. And there's no escape from hell. Um, and so, you know, the, the, thematically, this is, you know, what's going on, but it's cute. That makes it's, sense though. That makes sense. Yeah. Son of a bitch. I was waiting yeah. for Mephisto to show up in some way or form, but okay, whatever, whatever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, no, what, what have you thought of this, the, the, the last two episodes so far? I mean, I, I, they're, they're my speed. I, you know, like I'd rather have, you know, interesting discussions and, you know, characters toying with each other and, and straight up sci-fi concepts. Cause this is, this is very sci-fi. Um, 
even even though time travel isn't really possible in in in, in, rea- in reality but unless um, you have a weirwood tree right i mean time travel is probably the most fantastical thing but we we associate time travel with science fiction and it's very you know everything's kind of you know fun and 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 bend you know, mind uh, mind bending and stuff like that and um i i really like it uh i think the acting's been great i like all the characters um uh i think just discovering what's going on has has been a pretty cool adventure um, well it's not people have a mystery like wandavision but there's enough in there and people well people haven't figured it out people haven't figured it out as much as wandavision so we'll see uh you know, everybody's kind of clueless, so I guess that in that way it's kind of fun. I will, I will always remember how you were uh, kind of low key complaining about the Battle of Bastards. That uh, sometimes you like it when uh, there's all action. That way, no, no, Westworld. You were complaining about. You Westworld. weren't really complaining about it. You liked it in Westworld because sometimes you wanted action, like set piece to to take away from like reviewing the whole fucking. Th- you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> because because when i well when i was doing like um like game of thrones and westworld stuff like when i went scene by scene like and i would have to analyze each scene or make jokes about each scene like that's a lot of work but if it's action i can just skip it all like oh it's 15 <laughs> minutes of action do two stills and move on you know <laughs> and like to the next to the next scene because there's just nothing to say and so it would it would definitely help me out but we're not doing it like that. There's like for my own enjoyment, I, I've lost, I've lost, um, I've lost the my love of action. I used to love action. It used to be my favorite. What happened? You got older and more sophisticated with what you enjoy. So I I, I made this um, comment about uh, watching basketball. So I used to love watching basketball when I was young. Now I can't watch a basketball game anymore, um, mainly because. I've seen it all in basketball. Hmm. Like, like there's a hundred scores a game in basketball. You've like you've seen it all. You've seen every half court shot that to win the game, that last minute three pointer. Like, yeah, you, you've seen it with that. Unlike say, like I will say, American football is like every game is so unique. I've never seen seen the, the same game twice. You know, I've never seen the same score twice. Like it's. There's a lot of variation to American football, even if like morally it's a it's a game that is giving everybody brain damage and kind of horrible. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, you know, I wish they'd start tackling again. They don't tackle anymore. But basketball, I find boring because there's so many scores in every game that if, like eventually at this point in my life, I've I've fucking seen it. Like there's nothing exciting about about a basketball game anymore. So so I don't know. By the way, uh, Brazil. You, won. you were, you were, ju- you were, yeah, you were just watching your Brazil Colombia game. I don't know how you feel about football, uh, American European football? football, European football. You mean soccer? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> association football. Yeah, right. I know football. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, I watch. Um, I watch some of the Copa, uh, the 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 South American Cup. I watch some of the. Uh, I love the World Cup, um, but no, I was watching uh, Brazil versus Colombia. Like, Two one. Fuck. That's right. No offense wow, to my Colombian, but you know, there, there's a rivalry between the fucking like South American countries. It's whatever. Fuck them. Um, <laughs> but no, we won. So good day. Good good fucking day. Fuck you, Colombia. No offense to my Colombian subscribers. Love you guys. Um, did, I, did, I ever, did, I, did I ever tell you? <laughs> this time I was I was hanging out with some Uruguayans, and they were all convinced that if Uruguay were to face brazil in the world cup <laughs> that they would that they would win again because like the uruguayans have won every world cup that they've they've been to um and and they have their, their two their two wins and like they have so much heart that they would beat brazil if they face brazil in the world cup and i was like i don't know man <laughs> are these the same uruguayans who thought the the winds of winter will be would be released in 2020 and then in 2019 and then 2018 are those the same guys because i don't know no, if i can take those guys no. seriously <laughs> they, they must have <laughs> anyone anyone that thought winds of winter was going to be released before 2023 don't say that stop it uh guys uh do you mind if we wrap it up yeah sure guys thank you so much for watching as always we will see you next time with some more loki and uh, we gotta get back on fire and blood as well i want to get that uh oh yeah yeah uh, 
we we will be done in time for House of the Dragon. I think House of Dragon. We will. will we will. We're we're getting pretty close to the end, and and House of Dragon. We got a lot of time before that. Yeah, so. yeah, we got a lot of time. We'll finish. We'll, we'll finish uh, as always. Uh, guys, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time. Have a good one.